Hey, welcome to Bifocal. Uh, we have a little bit of a unique show today. We're going to be talking about photography. And specifically, we're going to be talking about lifestyle photography. So stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. Today's show is going to be kind of interesting. We have a special guest on today. We have Jenny Pavlak from Jennifer Marie Photography, and she focuses on a very unique kind of photography. And uh, there's a couple of things about her that you're going to learn as we uh, get into the show, but let me welcome her to the show. So Jen, welcome to Bifocal. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I want to get something out of the way right, right out of the gate for people who maybe don't know. You and I are were related. We are. We we were related. Your last name before Pavlak was harsh. It was. Yep. So it's Jen, you're, you're you're my daughter. Yep. You're my daughter. Yep. So it's first time on the show. Yeah. First yeah. Time on the I'm show. excited. He asked me to be here, and I got excited. Yeah. Well, you've got some interesting things going on. Yeah. So the name of your business is Jennifer Marie Photography. Jennifer. That's spelled how? Yes. J-E-N-N-Y-F-E-R. But that's not your name. No, but everybody calls me Jennifer now on sessions. <laughs> so, how did you, so why did you come up with that name? Um, since I was little, um, my grandpa actually, he would, every time he'd see me, he'd say, Jennifer. And then the name stuck. Um Every time you call me now, that's what you say. My friends through high school, they would call me Jennifer. Um, so it just stuck. And so I thought, why not? This has been my name, you know, my whole life. It's different. Um, I wanted to stand out. But now everybody I meet calls me Jennifer. I, so I think that's the name. I think so. Maybe I should change my birth certificate. So you you started this photography business a while back, mm -hmm. right? But you you started with a pretty unique focus. Yeah. T tell me about it. It has a name. Yeah. So lifestyle photography. Lifestyle. Yep. Um, so getting into photography, um, I knew I just wanted to be a little bit different. I didn't really want to do portraits um, because I really like capturing the moment. And so uh, once I started, I've been into photography my whole life really enjoyed it, kind of picked that up from you. You've been into it too. So it was a fun hobby to be able to do together. Um, but once I had my son, um, I stopped teaching. I used to teach um, middle school. And so I knew I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom though. Um, being the What subject did you teach? Uh, I taught language arts and math. So all the way uh, across the board there. But um, once I stayed at home, I'm very much an extrovert, love being around people. I could talk all day. So being at home with a newborn who doesn't talk, I was craving, you know. Do you feel like you're in jail? It's a whole new world, whole new world. Uh, so my husband, he's a great guy. He knew that I had this desire. And so he knew that I needed to somehow fulfill this desire. And so I told him, I said, hey, well, back up a little bit you have you have a lot of time on your hands with the newborn so i was listening to podcast after podcast after podcast and i came across this photographer who started their business what type of podcast did you listen to um so this specific person was a photographer and now she actually coaches entrepreneurs just any type of entrepreneur um and she's a mom and so had a lot of similarities. You're related. Yeah. Um, so me and, and my son, Luke, we'd go on walks all day and, and I would listen to this. And I really got excited about the business part of photography. Um, so throughout Luke's life when he was little, I was just capturing moments. I wasn't really like setting him up and, and doing all these poses because I thought. Now, did you did you have a camera or were you doing it with your phone? Um, I would do a lot with my phone just because at the moment, um, and then I started getting more into the editing side of it and I wanted it to be a little bit more, you know, finished, um, because I, I was just having fun with that, you know, I didn't have all those papers to grade at night. So when Luke went to bed, I really wanted that creative side. Um, and so it was kind of nice because a lot of my friends at the time were having kids. And so I would ask them, Hey, 
do you, would you be okay if I just took your family out and we would go to, you know, a park or, um, we live by a national park, which is gorgeous spots. Um, and I said, you know, I would love to just take pictures of your family for an hour. I'll give you all the photos. And so did you charge or was that free? No, I did it all for free. I just said, I'm really looking to build my portfolio. I'm looking so to- So you had decided you were going to start a business and you felt that was yeah. the way to get started, just get some clients for free. I'll do it for free for the exposure. Yep. Yep. My husband was on board with it and he, th he thought, you know, I think this is going to be great. You can have your thing. Um, so I built my portfolio and initially it was built around family, maternity, and newborn pictures. Is that lifestyle? <laughs> Lifestyle can be anything, which is awesome. And I can get more into that. But lifestyle is what your life entails. So I would like to say that lifestyle is more of being in the moment. Not so much me saying, go over here and do this. It's when we go on a session, I, I always coach my families or whoever it may be, but my client, what are some things of interest to you guys? So some families might say, you know, we love reading together. We love walking together. We love praying together. We love just doing activities. So if that be the case, then I say, okay, what activities? So we'll, we'll bring bubbles to the session or we'll bring blankets to do parachute or we'll do a ton of stuff that we're actually in the moment and not just kind of acting like we're just having a good time at the park. The kids are actually having fun. So it's not, fun. these aren't necessarily poised or posed pictures. Then. No, no. I might take a couple portraits within the session um, just to have those, um, but they're very much candid. They're very much specific to that family's life. Yeah. And I always talk about, I want to tell your story. It's your family. You guys are unique in your own way. Own your story. Just let me capture it is what I tell them. So that's that's lifestyle. That's lifestyle. Capture in the moment. Capture in the moment. Yep. So you're out, you're taking pictures of people you know pretty much for free mm -hmm. to start your business. Yep. Yep. And uh, this was, um, I think it was a, a little over two years ago. Um, and so it took me about four or five months to build my portfolio. I knew I wanted to have a little bit of everything. Um, I put some time into a website, I put some time into my social media um, to just start it off. And I So would, you were six months or, would you say six months or so just doing stuff for yeah. free yeah. to build a foundation to yep. look like, hey, I'm established enough now to do this. Right, right. And I had to, you know, kind of iron out some kinks of what I needed to learn you know, with even the business side of it and everything. Um, but yeah, from there, I kicked it off. I kicked it off. So what, just word of mouth then? And then you, at some point you had to say, I'm going to start charging for this. Yeah. Um, when I kicked it off, I started charging. So um, I would do a few giveaways here and there. Uh, word of mouth, mouth is the biggest way that I grow. Um, second to that is social media, usually Instagram or Facebook. Um, and so I'll, at the beginning, I was doing a giveaway a month. I was just trying to build my clientele. And a giveaway would be what? Um, if I had a fall mini session, I would say, I, you know, I'm going to give away one fall mini session if you will spread the word, basically. And, and what's that mean? When you give it away, what's that mean? What are you giving? I am giving the session and all of the images to Oh, so that you're going out to family. a place wherever you guys have agreed yep. upon, you're doing a, a session. Yep. So what's a session look like? It depends on the session. It depends on what type of session. Um, so I I range. Um, I've kind of broadened my lifestyle, um, I guess, gallery now. So I do do families, maternity, newborn engagements. I do that whole gamut. And then I've also uh, dove into some community events. And so I'm a, a big, big time into running. And so I really enjoy running. So does my husband. He owns his own physical therapy clinic and he works specifically with runners. Just so the viewers know, you you are actually a a Ohio State runner. I mean, you... Cincinnati. Well, I mean, you went to Cincinnati, but in high school, you you were oh. a, a, a high, an Ohio award winner. Yes. Went to the state several years. Yes many awards as a, so you were, you're a big time runner. I, yes. And I try, well, was, I'm trying to stay, keep up with it with the kids, but doing as much as I can. And, and yeah, it's been a big part of my life, big okay. part of my life. And so currently the way that I can stay into it is just, um, combining my love of photography and running. And so a couple of different ways I've done that is, um, I photographed a hundred mile race, 
which was 30 plus hours. And so I can 30 get 30 plus continuous hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had a, I had a second shooter. And so I think I slept maybe three of the hours. Um, and so we kind of, you know, bounced off of each other there. So how do you, how do you do something like that? Photograph. We live in, in the national park. And so the tow path goes through the national park and it's, um, a hundred miles long this race is. And so it was, I had a blast. It was great. We started at 4 a.m. And, um, so these runners are starting at 4 a.m. in the morning, 4 a.m. knowing they're going to run a hundred miles nonstop, nonstop. It's a different type of race. Um, it's not like the track. Um, they, there's different, uh, there's different stops where they have teams that come and they bring them food and they bring them water. And it's so interesting to see um, their teams come and line up and they have everything that they would need. And the runners will come by and they'll take one thing, but they have 25 things laid out for them, whether it's a peanut butter sandwich, M&Ms, gummy bears, electrolyte drinks, whatever it may be. But the runner knows exactly what they want and it better be there because I'm going to go, I'm going to stop and I'm going to go again. And so it's just a whole new world. So capturing all of that was amazing. And I, I'm going to I'm going to send you some images. So hopefully you can show some of the viewers some of these just throughout the day of what that looked like. Um, but I followed the top runners. Okay. I followed their families. I captured the more I, I told the story of those runners. And that's what the race director and I worked with on of, of just telling that. So story. How do you get a job like that? So the race director, this was her first year. Um, and she's amazing. She, she believed in what I did. Um, and she actually works with my husband as well. And she is, um, a national champion in the ultra marathon world. So she, she knows what she's doing. Um, and so we met, we talked, um, I told her my vision of just photography and how I wanted to tell a unique story of each individual. I don't want it to just be posed because anybody can, you know, just take a posed picture in my mind, uh, but telling the story and being there to capture that specific moment, you know, that takes, that takes skill. And so, um, yeah, we just worked, to, we just talked about, it. I hired a second shooter for it because a hundred miles is a, a long way to, to travel and capture all of that. So you're, you're going to a spot, taking some pictures and then you're trying to get ahead of the runners again. We would and be at a spot for maybe two minutes. We travel four miles, be at a spot two minutes, travel four miles in a car. And we were doing that for a hundred miles. Yep. Yep. It was amazing. So what are you looking for in this lifestyle photography? Like, what are you looking for? Yeah. How do you know what story to capture? And what are you at as a photographer through a photographer's eye? What, what are you looking for? I really try to know my clients without actually knowing them, but I, I, I look for the emotion. I look, if, if I'm at a family session and I have toddlers and this toddler, you oftentimes get toddlers who want nothing to do with what's going on and they're throwing fits. Those are the best pictures I find the toddler who is in the corner and just kind of mad, you know, but I will, or the toddler over there who's just goofing off, you know, are you guys going to do that? I'm just going to be over here and playing with rocks and skipping them. But Mom and dad want us to, you know, be standing here and be smiling. But I send the I send the galleries and the parents say, you got his face. That's the face he makes. He makes that all the time. And you captured that. You know, you can't you can't force that face upon someone. So I try to capture so those you're moments. For natural things. Yes. Yes. And so it's it's fun to see the parents' reactions when they get their galleries. Because I'm not a typical you know, here's your posed sessions. I, I guarantee about 10 minutes of posed images. So um, you do in that session, you are getting all four of them or three of them yes. sitting like this or something. Yes, but it's not the majority of my session. Are the, are the majority of the people that are contracting you, are they contracting you because they're interested in lifestyle photography? So that's why they're coming to you? I think it's getting out more so that I am a storyteller. When I first started, I'm not sure people knew what lifestyle photography really was. And I've really been trying to educate the people that come to me on, this is what I do. I tell your story. And so they're seeing more so of what I may 
post or what I may. Um, so when someone comes to you, somebody wants to book with you, mm -hmm. do you talk with them prior to the, sh the actual photo shoot? Yeah. So if you come to me, um, we have a consultation prior to you fill out a whole questionnaire on what makes your family unique. In 10 years from now, what do you want to remember from this session? Um, what are what are you hoping to be captured during this session? Just so that I get an idea. And then once I read that, then I reach out to my clients and I tell them, okay, first of all, I think this is the location that would fit best for you if you haven't already chosen one. A lot of people have chosen their homes or will go out on their family boat or we'll go to, um, we've gone to like a family cabin that means something to them. You know, I always think too, when you're going to post, me specifically, and I guess this is why I do what I do, but me specifically, I'm going to want an image in my house that means something to me. I don't want to go somewhere where I'm like, I don't really know why I was there. I was there for the session. You know what I mean? I want it to be meaningful. I want to look back on this 20 years from now and be like, that was. Where we lived then. Yeah. Yep. Or what the house looked like then. I think the biggest thing that is caught on is newborn lifestyle sessions. Um, so I come into the family's house anywhere between four to 14 days after the baby's born, and we take pictures within their home. And those have been so special. We go into um, the nursery. We go into the parents' room. We go into the family room and it's fun. Some people will have, you know, the house looking like a, there's a newborn baby in there. There's newborn stuff everywhere, but that's life. And some people like to have the house all put together. You know, that's their, they might be, you know, more particular. And I think that's so fun. That's what I would want to remember, you know? So yeah, it can, it can range. From. Do you take props with you? So I do offer, um, a studio part of a session if someone wants that, um, but I don't do full studio sessions. Okay. So I understand that that, you know, that might be something that someone wants, but that's an additional part of what I do. What are some unique places you've gone? I actually just went to, uh, it was a lake house. And the lake house was passed down. It was a girl my age. She just had a, a baby. Um, the baby was, I think, five, six months old. And the lake house was passed down from her great, great grandma. So her great, great grandma passed it down to her daughter, to her daughter, to her daughter. And it's now this girl's lake house. And it was so special. On their stairwell, they had all of the bride's pictures that have been in the house. I think there was eight people. So to me, that that's amazing yeah. that we could have the session there um another location i went to um was just in the national park um and so we went to it's called the nature room um i did a senior session there and this senior um she she was fun she had she kind of had just a little bit of an edge to her and so it was fun to be able to go there and we could just we got we got into the flowers, into the field, into everything because she just was kind of edgy. She just wanted to be in in the wild, you know what I mean? And that meant something to her. Um, so we kind of found that look, and I can send you some of those. Um, there's, I mean, it's it's been everywhere. So you do a lot of, did you, would you do more outdoor than you do indoor? Um, mostly, yeah. Um, Even in the winter, you may go outdoor? Yes. So I, I hold winter mini sessions. Um, this year we're having it at a log cabin, which is really, really cool. It's the first time I'm doing it there. Um, but most of them are outside. The winter in Ohio for photographers is always very slow. Yeah. So I'm mostly doing newborn sessions in the winter. Yeah. yeah. So do you get a lot of clientele that they start with you maybe like during a pregnancy and then they're using you for the next that's the goal. And I've had a lot of clients who have done that. And it's just been fun to build that relationship with them and um, just, you know, to stay in contact just through, you know, sending pictures to one another. I have clients who will send me pictures throughout the week. Just look what they did this week. And it's so fun. I love that just to see them grow. And then when I see them at their six month session, it's not like I haven't seen them since yep. their newborn session. They know you. Yes. So it's a little, you know them, you know the personality now. Yeah. And it's, the type of photography I do it is very intimate. And so inviting someone into your home that you don't know, 
That's a little intimidating. You know what I mean? So being able to make a relationship with your clients, I think, is yeah. really important. Have you ever had somebody come in, a photographer come in and do lifestyle on you and your family? I did. It's so weird, like hiring a photographer when you are one. But I think it's so important. I can't take family pictures with me. I, I mean, it'd be difficult. So um, I it was actually the second shooter for the 100 miler. We've really gotten to know one another. Um, she's actually kind of been a mentor to me. And so she's she uh, came in and she did my daughter's three month session in our home. Um, and so we knew we weren't going to be in our home forever. And so we really wanted to document just what life was like in this home. So yeah, it was fun. And it was, it was nice to see kind of just how she ran her session. I just let her do her thing and she did an amazing job. Yeah. So you guys just hung out in your house and she caught yep. moments. Yep. We played with cars like we always do on the floor. And I put, you know, my daughter in her crib and we just played in there like she does. And yep. Just think how like far been. out reaching do you go? Out? Yeah. So I like to stay 30 uh, minutes out within Akron. Um, and then I do charge a fee if it's outside of there. I'm actually doing a wedding in Virginia next summer. So you're doing a wedding. I just booked my first wedding. Yeah. Yeah. So they were all about telling the story. They wanted to tell the story of the day and she reached out to me. And she said, I know you haven't done this, but I really would like you to photograph. Are you day. nervous to do a wedding? I am nervous and so excited. So excited. I know it's going to be a whole thing, um, but I also know the client. And so I think that's going to be helpful, especially with my first one. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be fun. What What are some of the challenges for lifestyle photography? If you miss the moment, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. You got to have the right settings. You got to know with the sun where you need, like you want to capture the moment, but you kind of want them to be in the right spot, you know, for that moment. Um, if the sun glares on them, it, 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 the image isn't going to be great. You know, I try to do as much in my camera so I don't have to do as much post, -ed, post op, you know what I mean? So not as much on the editing side. Um, and just making people comfortable, you know, not you have to take charge. Oh yeah. And I tell them guys, I'm going to use my teacher voice. You're going to feel like I'm a boss, but I am going to be a boss. And these pictures are going to be worth it. You get your gallery. My hope is I bring tears to your eyes. And so that's why I tell them. And usually the dads are like, good, tell me what to do. <laughs> the dads aren't into it as much as the moms. I think I'm going to bring a trophy for dads and just say, you know, at the end of each year, I'm going to pass out this trophy to the dad of the year because, mm -hmm. and I always tell them, dads, this is going to feel so awkward, but it will look so good. And you'll be so glad because your wife is going to love this. Yeah. And so they usually understand. So in a normal session, how many pictures would you take? How many do I take or do I deliver? Do you take? Usually in an hour session, I'll take around 300 pictures. Is that a session's typically an hour? For, yes. Yep. You'll take 300. Yeah. Pictures. I usually take 300 pictures. Now your client, are they getting a deliverable? Like they know what they're getting a certain number of pictures or what, what do you give them? So I, I've actually changed that a little bit. Um, I used to give them 15 images that they could download, but then they would have a gallery of anywhere from 80 to a hundred images that if they wanted to purchase more, they could do that. Um, that got my session fee a little bit lower. Now it's really like kind of bugged me that I can't give, I couldn't give them all of the images. I thought I need, I need to do this. I'm editing them all anyways. So you're editing all 300 pictures. No, I go through when I get home and I, I weed through them. Like I said, okay. if the, you know, if there's a glare, if there's something I weed through them, I usually narrow it down to about 120. Okay. By the time I deliver. So you do have some pictures that are throwaways. This just didn't work. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. So I've changed it now where my clients get all of the images. It's a little bit more expensive, but the clients were choosing to buy them anyways. So I thought, you know, if this were me, I'd want all the images. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about editing. Yeah. You do a, you do a shoot. Now you yeah. got to go edit. You got 300 pictures or so. Yeah. You got to look at all those, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're capturing the ones and then you got to edit those. So how long would it take to edit one photo shoot. Yeah. So for me personally, it might be different for all photographers. One hour of shooting is anywhere between three to four hours of editing. Um, and so you could have five hours in a, in a photo shoot. I could. I like, I really enjoy the editing process. I find it relaxing. I find it. All right. Here's just, a question for you. Yeah. I'm into photography. 
yes. not to the to the level that you are, but um, it seems that taking the picture is one thing, editing the picture is another whole thing, and both have their own skill set and their own art. Mm-hmm. Would, yep. would you agree with that? One hundred percent. So editing is pretty important. One hundred percent. Yeah, I like to think. The iPhone is going to put photographers out of business if photographers aren't artists themselves. So I like to deliver images that someone isn't just going to pick up their phone and be able to take themselves. And so the way that I go about doing that is, one, just the settings in my camera, the angles I'm getting, you know, if you're... So you're not just you know, pointing and shooting. You, you're you using certain settings based on some effect you're yeah, trying to get. It's, uh, it's taken me a while to learn how to shoot manual, but once I learned, oh, it was a game changer. Just being able to have control. What's that mean, manual. to shoot manual? What's yeah. That? Um, so oftentimes um, when you start out, you shoot an automatic. So the camera has complete control over what you're shooting. And so it will control the shutter speed. It will control the aperture. It will control you know all of that, the lighting, all of that. Um, when you shoot in manual, you can control how fast you want the shutter you know, to process. You can control how blurry you want it in the background or how how much you don't want, how, if you want the whole scenery to be in the in the picture. Um, you can in, control how, how bright you want it, how dark you want it. And so it's all kind of the way that you view what you're shooting. And so oftentimes I'll be um, at, a, at a session, I'm like, oh, this is so vibrant. You know, I want all of these colors to just pop. And so I have to shoot in a certain setting so that I can make those colors pop. You know, um, I did send you a picture from the canal corridor. Um, and this this specific image was one that when I went to edit it. It's on my phone? Yeah, we can, we can pull it up. Um, this is the race you did? This was the race I did. And this was at mile... I think this was at mile 50. Okay, I got two of them here. Which one am I yep, looking so at? Yeah, so the first image here. Okay. Um, this was at mile 50. Uh, this was in Canal Fulton. And you're going to see one guy here. Uh, he has pacer on his back. So he paced the the runner for about 20 miles. He but it, paces for 20 miles. He paces for 20 miles. This guy's running, running a marathon to pace somebody. Yes. And these guys are running like 750 miles. For 100 miles? For 100 miles. Yeah, it's crazy. It's wild. If you notice here, this image is very bright. Nothing really, in my opinion, stands out to me. Um, so I shot in a way that if you scroll to the next image, I could make some things pop. I made those oh, wow. clouds stand out. Um, there's an ice cream shop over on the left-hand side there. The red building? Yeah. And so I kind of enhanced that red a little bit. I didn't want this image to look fake, though. I still wanted it to look authentic, and I wanted mm-hmm. it to look like we were just – they were out running, you know, but I wanted it to be bright. And so I didn't, I didn't add anything to the picture. I didn't, you know – all I did was just enhance. And so those clouds, if 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 you looked back at the before, you couldn't really see yeah. uh, the difference between the clouds. And, and that's all done in editing. Yeah, that's all in Photoshop right there. That's what you use as Photoshop. I use Photoshop and Lightroom. Yeah. Yep. And so um, that image was one of my favorites. There's another one that I can I can send you to. Um, that it was it was just real, but in just the little things of enhancing the colors, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but there's one more image. There's a difference here. So editing, you can just enhance, but you have to shoot in a certain way. Or with editing, it's kind of fun. You can change the image entirely. Um, so having two little ones, they are just, You sent me a couple more here. I, I did. Okay. So having two little ones, they get to go on photo shoots all the time. Uh, this is my son. And this we, is Luke. Yep. That we were in a cornfield that they had just um, cut down. He was having a blast. Um, and he was just running all over the place. And so this image, this is before, uh, pretty bland. Nothing yep. really going on there. Um, so what I did, this is just how I viewed it. I viewed us. We can't go at sunrise. He's still sleeping. You know, that's another thing with with little ones. You got to work within their you schedule. You have to work within their schedule. So it's a little bit. So if you go to after, 
I was able to add in <laughs> the sunrise and just a few birds. Those birds weren't there. The they sun were wasn't there. there. Nope. Nope. And so Photoshop is is pretty amazing of that all that you can add in. Um, so I like like I said, I want to I want to de- deliver something that you can't take yourself. Mm. I don't make every image like that um, on a gallery that I sent to you. Um, that edited edited looking or however you want to say it um but i do do some what what i usually do is in a gallery um there's two parts and i have your gallery and then i usually call it the photographer's edit and so then i'll put you know five to ten images that it was how i saw the picture some people like it some people don't but i also give them the image not edited can you think of anything that like real creative you did like yeah there was um so through COVID, uh, I don't know if everyone saw the rainbows that were kind of catching along, just an image of hope, you know? Um, so I thought to myself, how can I use this? And so there was uh, this boy and it was my friend's son. And it was just an image of his face, just looking directly into my camera. Um, and I made it look as though it was raining, you know? And in his eyes, I put rainbows so that through the rain, he was just looking at hope is what I tried to do. And so it was more so me just kind of putting out there, this is a tough time. You know what I mean? So I think artists have a different way of seeing things. And some people like it, some people don't. But So you got to be a little bit of an artist. You got to have an eye. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. How important is your equipment? Oh man, let's just say I finally got the camera that I wanted and it is a game changer. If you're talking like cameras. Why? Um, so I shoot with the Sony A7 III. The image is so much more crisp. Um, when I go to edit, uh, I can zoom in so much to just the pores on your nose and it is so clear. Um, I think that's just the, um, the processor in the camera and it's a mirrorless camera, which I think makes a huge difference. Um, and the lens that I'm using, I've noticed that I only like shooting with prime lenses. I, I just don't like shooting with zoom lenses. A lot of prime lens. I mean, for someone who wouldn't know what's that mean? Yeah. So a prime lens, uh, you basically are the zoom. So I can't just turn it and zoom. Nope. Nope. But you're able to in my opinion, blur so much more with the picture. I can get right up to a little kid and the whole background's blurry, but the whole face is so in focus. Um, So that's that's my favorite lens to shoot with is a 35 millimeter. Um, So that's what I usually take. I would think a photographer kind of um, ends up adapting to a favorite lens that they just get comfortable with. Well, I'll come over and I'll shoot with some of your lenses and it's just like, whole new world with you know what i mean because the settings aren't the same on your camera and you just have to get used to it but yeah, yeah it's like picking you up have home. your camera like customized to everything you yep. you want yep all the buttons i know where they are so well you know you fast. mentioned you shoot in manual mm-hmm. okay for you know if anybody under, really understands what that means you got to be pretty good at that because especially in lifestyle photography because you're trying to capture a moment you don't have a lot of time to adjust the aperture adjusts the, the exposure compensation. The yeah. sh- you got to know what you're doing pretty quick. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And so... Um, that I, is a difference between you and I. <laughs> Just fine. Whenever, when whenever you use my camera, I get it back <laughs> and everything's messed up. I never shoot in manual. No, I, you don't. No, I'll shoot in, in aperture or yeah. shutter priority, but yeah. never... Man- I don't like manual at all. Yeah. But I think it's, it's a preference and you get used 100%. to what you get used to to doing. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell if I'm shooting at something um, and it's a little dark and it's not as blurry as I want in the background. I know the two things that I need to change. And so right away, I'm just able to change those as opposed to if I'm shooting an aperture priority, I'm, I I don't have control over, you know, a certain section. So I, I can't change what I want to change. So have you had any instances where you just totally blew it? Oh man. First couple of sessions, I had my exposure way up the whole time. Didn't realize it. Got home, all my images were overexposed. It was. So what'd you do? You learn. You was learn. this a paid 
customer? This one was not, thankfully. This was just at the beginning. Were you able to salvage any of the pictures? I was, but they weren't what I was hoping. You know what I mean? But that's how you learn. And that's why you do things for free at the beginning. But yeah. Yep. Wow. Yep. So have you had any famous pictures or anything that maybe got some notoriety? Or? So it's, it's fun just as the business continues to grow, you meet more people and people, um, I think really enjoy what you do. So they, it, w when you work with them, you're like, I don't really know what I want, but I like what you do. So just do your thing. And just that freedom is great. So with Canal Corridor, which was a hundred mile race, um, I, that was my first time photographing anything like that. Uh, I was really nervous, so nervous. Uh, I photographed, you know, just some running events, you know, just like with my husband or friends are going out, you know what I mean? But nothing this uh, specific. So after that, I, got, I was joking with my husband. I went home. I'm like, the goal, Ultra Runner Magazine, just in my life. I would just love to be. That's a big runner's magazine? Yes. So, um, and then literally two weeks later, the marketing director from Ultra Runner Magazine messaged me and she said, we want your picture to be the cover of the article that we're writing about Canal Corridor. I about fell over. I thought that was the coolest thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that was pretty neat. Um, and then I've had just like families who have had um, recognition just in their community. Um, I've done photo sessions for them and they've been the cover of a magazine. Um, I've done corporate events. And so their headshots are just um, some things around the office have been on their website. Headshots are becoming, uh, and I saw on your website that that's actually a service you are, headshots. Yeah. So I've actually renamed it to branding sessions because, um, which they are headshots, but most of the clients that I've been taking headshots for are for something that they want to be self-branding for. And so usually it will be, um, I've done it for, for teachers who have their own site and they're putting out content, but they need images of themselves. Or I've done, um, you know, marketing agents, I've done business owners, I've done, um, bloggers, you know, just anybody who's looking to promote themselves. And I really work with them too on let's tell your story. Let's make your image capture you. We need to be. So you're still keeping the lifestyle theme. Yes. Yes. But I think in today's day and age, a lot of people are doing their thing, which is great, I think. Um, but it takes a lot to promote yourself. You know, so I think having the image that right away when someone looks at it, they can say, oh, you know, they're really sharp. They're really, you know, um, or they're really into, you know, home, put, putting their home together or whatever. So we, we make it into that type of environment, you know. Yeah. You have any big events coming up? Um, well, the, the Canal Corridor, they booked me again. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um the fall is really busy, which is family sessions. The fall in Ohio is gorgeous. So I really try to keep that open to a bunch of family sessions. Um, and then I do have a big event in my own personal life. We're expecting baby number three. So that's kind of... So you're pregnant. Yeah. So keeping that, um, that kind of... We're doing February. So it's kind of trying to have maternity leave and not book. I've had to turn away some newborns, which is always a bummer, but... Got to put my family first. So, yeah. Yep. Yep. So then after that, it'll be weddings and families again and newborns. But, yep. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, hey, very interesting. Very interesting. You got to be proud. I mean, you started yeah. this from scratch. And how, I mean, how busy are you? Like during a week, what's a, what's a week look like for you? Yeah. I cap it three sessions a week. That's what works for my family. And that's what works for me. And um, so I usually shoot on Wednesdays and Saturdays. So, so you're spending 20, 25 hours a week between your photo shoot and your editing time. Yeah. Just, a, yeah, about. Oh, wow. Yep. And your husband's a, he owns his own business. He does. Yeah. He's a physical therapist. So working with runners. And so we're living the entrepreneur life. Yeah. Yeah. So the running thing's kind of both your alleys. It is, which is so fun. And our little son, he, uh, he's, he's big into, into running. running too. He calls it set go. 
Set go. Set go. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I want to thank you for coming. If somebody wanted thank to reach you. out to you, how do they find you? Yeah, Jenny Fur Marie Photography. How yeah. do they find you? Yeah. So um, on Instagram, I'm Jenny Fur Marie Photography, J E N N Y F E R. Or you can go to my website, which is jennyfurmarie.com. Jennyfurmarie.com. Yep. And you have everything we talked about out there? Everything on there. Yep. You can reach out to me, contact me. I would love to hear from you. Well, good. Hey, it was it was fun having you in. It was fun. I'm Thank proud you. of you. Thank it's you. it's a great story, and uh, just building it from scratch. Just building it from scratch. So, I learned from the best. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. But <laughs> great story. Hey, thanks for uh, thanks for listening in today. Uh, I thought today would be interesting because it's been a little bit unique from what we've been talking about, and a little bit of twist from art to photography to entrepreneurship and to marketing. And uh, so I thought Jen had quite a story and, and uh, I'm glad she was able to come in. If you like shows like this, hit subscribe. We'd like to hear from you. We'd like you to follow us. If you have certain shows you would like us to talk about or to put on, email me, dharsh at danharsh.com. I would love to hear from you. We'll make sure we get a show like that uh, on the docket. But hey, thanks again for tuning in and stay tuned for the next show.